Welcome to another Rust and WebAssembly meeting, working group meeting. Uh, so first on the list is RFC triage. Uh, and so we still have uh, two proposed for FCP uh, RFCs, final comment period request for comments. Uh, and so those are the 2019 roadmap and the NPM packages. Uh, and then we also have one that actually made it to uh, FCP. Uh, so there's, a, I guess, a little bit less than a week. Uh, if you have any strong uh, opinions about local JavaScript snippets and using them from Wasm Bindgen. Um, and yeah, so moving on to status updates for Wasm Bindgen. Do we have any news? Yeah, so one, I guess, oh, come with that one bundlers actually. So I, there's a sample implementation of the JS snippets. The current design can obviously change before we actually merge it, but if you're curious to try it out, see what it looks like, play around with it, it's uh, sitting there as a pull request. And apart from that, I think there's not much else. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the, I guess the only other thing uh, I'd like to mention is just that I intend to circle back to the FN once uh, thing at some point soon. Um, yeah, so somehow that like fell afoul of like the allocator or something, which I feel like is probably not actually a bug in the allocator, but you know, some, some bug in some of our unsafe code or something. Um, all right, any WASM pack updates? Uh, so there is the uh, license and readme files that were included in the files key of package.json unnecessarily when uh, NPM would just kind of automatically do it for things named license and README. Uh, and so that is no longer included in the, um, in the files key. And I guess there's ongoing discussion about uh, the output stuff, which is kind of a continuation of some of the things we talked about at the Rust All Hands. Um, which was basically trying to to migrate Wasm Pack to this kind of ideal future uh, around its output, both around like kind of graceful degradation in the face of like old or less featureful terminals that don't support emojis or um, spinners and things like that, uh, as well as just kind of like being deliberate and conscious about like what we print and um, whether we print a given message or not, essentially. All right, anything in bundlers and templates? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, lastly, we, we fixed a couple of decoding issues we, we saw in Wasn't Bind Um Apart from that, I don't think we have something else. So one thing that I would add here is that when I was at the, um, the hackathon last weekend, there was a team, a group of folks that were working on parcel and WASM integration. And then I, so I heard that like they got something cool working. Although when I asked for a link, I never heard back from them. So I'm not actually sure, but we might want to, I don't know, at some point I'm going to try and take a look at it or take, Take a look around the web for par around parcel stuff and see if there's some WASM improvements there. And maybe you can see. there you might mean, be. Do you mean the, the parcel bundler? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, it's quite sad because we have no connection with those guys. I don't I don't know. It's true. Uh any updates on docs? Jay? Um, 
Yeah, so those docs were merged in the new edition of the, or new release for Webpack. Awesome. Uh, um, I'd be happy to write more um, on those, because I know that there are other templates that need some docs too. Word. Um, so the the one thing I've been thinking about in terms of like a larger milestone for for our doc stuff, um, well, I guess there's there's two things. I'll, I'll get to the other one in a second. Um, would be for the game of life tutorial to be a bit more uh, stripped down and and basic in the sense that right now it is. Uh, doing the whole like webpack integration and mm -hmm. all of that stuff and like doing multiple different packages that you npm link together um, and this has been a bit too much kind of like workflow and stuff for people who uh, are just kind of entering the ecosystem uh, and so I think it would be nice to to get that tutorial working with no modules yeah, uh, talked about that yeah. last time, I think. Did we? Okay, yeah. So that's like one big thing that I think we could push forward on docs. And the other is uh, work that Alex kind of started and I've been uh, letting languish, uh, which is pulling together like a bookshelf similar to the Rust docs bookshelf, which kind of links to the API docs and the Rust program language book and Rust by example and everything, right? Like it's kind of like this place where everything is linked from, uh, where we have similar kind of problems of many disparate documentation sources, but it would be mm -hmm. nice to have like a bookshelf saying, here's all of the different places. Um, and that actually has a work in progress PR um, that just needs like some more, I think what it needs before landing is like a little bit more like here's like random links and a little more like here's what these links are and why you want to follow this link instead of that other link. Um, so if you're interested in, in taking over that as well. Okay. Um, yeah. I will put it on my list of things to do. All right. I think someone, I'm assuming probably Alex just put in a link uh, into the paper. Okay. Um, is that PR? Wait, that PR hasn't had anyone work on it for a while, or? Uh, it's been sitting there for about a month-ish, or a couple weeks. Okay. Um, the it's, general it's, idea is, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. It, the general idea is it's just pulling together the most recently published version of Wasmbindja and Wasmpack, and then the most recent book, and just putting them all together in one location. And mm -hmm. so there currently is a landing page that is literally just three hyperlinks to those three things. Yeah. But I would say that it's far more uh, introduction and explanatory text and things like that. And so that page is the one that kind of needs some more love and some uh, direction about where that's going. Okay. Um, I, I was kind of curious from like a courtesy point of view, like how long is the appropriate amount of time for a PR to be picked up by someone else? Uh, don't worry, as the author of the PR, I can tell you, if you want to, if you want to take it and run with it, you're more than welcome to. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this, that is a, a question of like general etiquette that I feel has a hard answer that I don't know. In this case, <laughs> the PR was started by Alex and then I was supposed oh, to. Oh, okay. And I haven't been doing that. So please. Sure, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I, if you can talk to the people who did the PR, then it's easy to be like, ah, can I do this? Yeah. So yeah, I will do that. One recommendation I might also have is on the um, for the book. It might actually be cool to use the proposed browser flag that's being implemented with the JS snippet stuff, because I feel like that mm. feels uh, much more natural than the no module stuff. Where no module still feels kind of like a little bolted on, a little weird, and so that's like using modern ES modules, using modern JavaScript, and so that, that might be a good way to introduce things as well. Okay. But obviously, that shouldn't. If it could be done in like the next week, then don't bother with that. Go ahead and do, do new modules. But if it takes a little bit longer than the new module or the browser stuff, my support and my pack might land in the meantime. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, so. 
there's an item here about code splitting and dynamic loading. And I don't know who put it there and who would like to talk about it. Cool. Okay. So, yep. So we, we, I think we also discussed this long back in some of our issues. And I think this is a good time to bring it back now. Uh, we need to add some way uh, code splitting and uh, dynamic loading stuff inside this whatever we generate because whatever we are currently generating is a single huge file, right? So mm -hmm. by any means of any means, can we split it and then try to load it dynamically and things like that, which kind of increases the performance but for discussion. Can we start something related to that? So I guess I would back up and say like, do we have people that are asking to do this? with like real projects or something? I'd say no for now. I, but I, I have some people who came and asked me, but apart from that, I don't think there is much of interest there as per our repo. But I think that would be a very good addition. That's the point that I want, I want to make it clear. So, so everything is possible now. Um, we've created demos in the past, uh, and like a lot of the work we did in the past was kind of around trying to make it a nice rusty interface and also trying to avoid the problem of like having to manually choose like which functions end up in which blob and do a bit more of, uh, I don't know, I, I guess like a graph based approach. Um, that stuff I feel is a little bit further off because it involves like doing a lot of stuff that the linker does for you or like needing stuff out of the linker. Uh, but like just doing like basic dynamic loading and like manual manually kind of doing code splitting instead of kind of an automatic transparent thing that happens for you uh, is totally possible now. And like, you just need like a tiny bit of JavaScript to uh, manipulate the function tables for you. Um, so like we could, I, I could pull up the old uh, proof of concepts that we had and like we could cut that up a little bit and make like a demo or something. And that might be useful. Um, Thoughts? Yep. I, I think that would be really useful, but uh, added to that because the current issue with uh, Webpack or WebAssembly.js, the file that we use, uh, the library that we use to split or compile this whatever code that we're generating is like uh, we try to manually try to allow, uh, remove certain bits and then add some bits to it, like try to manipulate that vast WebAssembly file that we're generating, which kind of having a bit more trouble because sometimes the spaces might increase. Sometimes we have to be very careful when we're doing that stuff. So I think if we have the library that itself creates us an opportunity to create those kind of files, I think it'd be really helpful. That's, that's what I am thinking of at this moment. Yeah, maybe in the future, if someone is really interested in doing that stuff, but we should have some POCs or examples that are there. I mean, as Nick mentioned, so currently in JS, you have like code splitting um, points where you say that this chunk of JS and this uh, sub part of the graph must be loaded dynamically, like with using the uh, import function, right? Mm. And so I guess in uh, Wasn't Engine, you need some kind of thing to say that this should be loaded dynamically. Maybe an annotation or bindings to the to the JS import uh, function. So um, I can maybe think of, of like if you split all your pages in uh, crates, maybe you could just dynamically load crates on the um, automatically. But yeah, essentially somehow, you'd have multiple crates that are each compiled yeah. to WASM and some would be able to import the other. Uh, dynamically, so through the, the function table rather than through the kind of static upfront imports. Um, yeah, so it's it's not going to be like, at least for, for an initial thing, it's not going to be like, here, this function, load it lazily, because it's it's 
a bit more invasive than that. Like it changes the whole compilation model and um, yeah. That's one where I, I like the idea of holding out for um, some compelling use cases or like some some motiva some motiva motivational use cases that are like this is in production and like this is slow and we realized if we can do this, this would solve our load times or whatever. Because that, it, this is such a major change, not just the compilation model, but also just kind of like how you build it, the tool chain. There's a lot of moving parts here and there's so many ways we could design this, but it's unclear which are just work versus which are going to be beneficial in the long run. And so, because like Rust, for example, doesn't really do a great job of this, of dynamic loading, even on native platforms. So like on, on, every, on any platform, doing Rust with dynamic loading is a lot of effort and just a lot of stuff to get it right. And so I think like, we have an opportunity to do it really, really well, but um, I did, it's, it'll be tough to design without some example use cases and things. Okay, no idea. Yeah. I mean, technically, I think you could do it with Webpack, just compiling multiple uh, creates at the same time and loading them within Webpack. In that case, both will be dynamic lo lo uh, loaded. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible right now. Um, but a lot of it is how nice do we want to get it and where do you make that cut? Like, because as, as soon as you do this, you're probably going to want to like factor out the allocator into its own thing as well, because that's likely to be shared between both model modules, um, et cetera. Yeah. But also, I'm thinking about something else. I think it's quite some a more general issue because, like in Webpack, we are thinking of if you load multiple was a module, is it maybe worth it uh, concatenate them, concat them, mm. or maybe just loading them uh, in parallel? So maybe uh, wasn't binding could have some such of such a, a heuristic that says that. If the file is bigger than one k, we can split it. Or if two files are less than one k, we can merge them. Whatever. But something like that could be um, investigable. Yeah, that's. I think that's something that Wasm Bindgen could consider, or Wasm Pack, or something like like a tool chain for a specific like language or ecosystem or vendor. I don't know how to say. Uh, like for Webpack to do that, I think it's a bit scarier because you don't know, like like putting two things into the same linear memory, like you don't know if they're, how they're using linear memory and they might both be saying like, here's my global at this location. Um, and, yeah, sure, sure. Just yeah. to clarify, we don't do it because of that. We right. uh, probably want to wait for multiple memories at least. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to me, it sounds like this would be an optimization for load times. And if we're like gonna do any sort of optimization, maybe it would be good to have like numbers to start with. Right. So may, maybe like the starting point for all of this would be to start benchmarking like, hey, what, what are our load times like? What's our binary size like? Can we, can we speed this stuff up? And then later on, like way down the line, we can like figure out the perfect way to like do all these things, but like a practical for now, maybe. Agreed. This kind of comes yeah. back to the, you know, maybe we should wait for real world use cases before we start like pushing forward on this a lot. And then, yeah, also, so did you do any binary size stuff at the hackathon at all, Alex? Okay. Uh, but we have vague plans in the roadmap to start watching binary size over time. I don't know if we talked about that last week. Yeah, we did. Okay. I'm not going to go over that again. Just to make sure, uh, when you say binary size, does it include the JS glue as well? Uh, it should. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't exist yet, but good point. Yeah, for sure. It, it's kind of a variety where, like, I the the, the goal is we want a. Uh, representative tracking over time of the size of Rust assembly, which is all very uh, amorphous or like unclear intentionally. So like JS, WASM, specific kinds of WASM, before and after Webpack, all kinds of things. GZIP, non-GZIP, stuff like that. Cool. Well, we are out of agenda items. 
uh, are there anything else kind of off the cuff that we would like to discuss? I have a real quick remark, which sure. is we should update the Zoom link in the recurring meeting on Google Calendar, because that, that was my uh, bug, why I wasn't there last time and why I trouble joining today. I can do that, yes. Awesome, um, thank you. And also, if anyone wants to be on this calendar event, uh, let me know and I'll invite you. It's just yeah. my personal calendar. So, I actually would like to. Uh, I will send you my email. Thank you. Yeah, just send it to me on Discord or IRC or something. All right. Well, anything else? Uh, okay. Well, have a great week. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put out another uh, this week in Rust and WebAssembly. Uh, really trying to do that uh, weekly now. And um, a reminder that if you have anything that you want to show up there, uh, put the label T-W-I-R-A-W-A, -A, which is this week in Rust and WebAssembly. Um, yeah, so uh, have a great week. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.